State Representative James Beverly says lawmakers could take a look at adding Payne City to the Macon Bibb Consolidated Government. I caught up with him before session starts on Monday. Representative Beverly, heading into the 2015 session, any big topics you're expecting this year? Well, obviously, on everyone's mind is medical marijuana, and uh, I think that's going to be a very interesting debate. Uh, looking forward to it. Uh, you know, I think it the um, who's going to be treated, where's the production come from, how how are we going to actually get this medicine into the heads of, hands of the people who really need it most? It's going to be a great debate, uh, but it's going to pass. There's no doubt about it. There's a lot of energy around that, and, and it's time. But the larger issue is what happens with the kids who have gone to jail because of it. Do we commute their sentences? I mean, you're going to make money on one hand, but on the other hand, you have you know, this economy that's been underground for years. What do we do with those kids? And I think part of the conversation has to talk about that as well. And I know one of the big things this year is maybe taking a look back at the consolidation charter. Anything for your district that you see with that? Yeah, I think that, you know, on a lot of people's mind is Payne City. What are we going to do with that? Are we going to consolidate that? Is it going to become a part of consolidated government? I've always been under the, uh, of the opinion is that the vote is sacred. And even though it's nine votes to seven that the people spoke, uh, I spoke to the mayor of Payne City. We're going to try to come up with something that makes some sense. Uh, but as it stands right now, we'll probably deal with that as a local issue. And uh, we'll see where Payne City falls within this consolidated government if she can give me the, uh, the, the go ahead with making sure that every vote counts and that the people say that's what they want. And what about with making the leaders approaching the delegation recently talking about that budget, make, making sure they consolidate that budget and, and trying to maybe rework the charter? Yeah, you know, I was never really for that. I mean, it, it, really is, it really doesn't make any sense to actually shrink the budget. And the reason why it doesn't is if you anticipate more revenue coming in, what do you do? You already have a mandate that says you have to shrink it. So, for instance, all the work that they're doing on Second Street Corridor, right, everything that's happening is going to increase the revenue structure. Why do we have to shrink the budget? You should be using that revenue to actually do things, right, fill up the coffers and that kind of thing. So it just, I, I just think it's just bad policy. And so I, I'm absolutely against that, completely is shrinking the budget. you got to just kind of let uh, market forces take its way in the public sector so that we can continue to drive opportunity. So would you be willing to look back at the charter? Oh, yeah, sure, it? absolutely. I mean, you know, those guys, uh, you know, they're my, they're my friends on the other side of the aisle. And I think they just have a philosophy that you got to cut, you got to cut, you got to cut in order to make the government more efficient. That's just not true, not from my perspective. And so I don't know that I have the vote to do it, but certainly the voice. Hopefully we'll start to listen to some reason on the other side and say, you know, this probably doesn't make any sense. We need to just get rid of that mandate altogether. Well, what about respecting the voters, as you mentioned? Board voters vote, the voters voted yeah. to consolidate and to right. cut that budget. Great so point. Is that That's an absolutely great point, but it's a perverse incentive, right? So when you look at the whole, like, so a part of the cleanup legislation for the budget would be how to you incentivize the community to continue to grow and again if you're capping a budget actually you're not capping you're reducing it but you have anticipated revenue growth what do you do with that growth that's really the real that's a policy issue what do you do with that money mm -hmm. I don't know unless you expand the pot you you don't have any you don't have any real ways to actually allocate those increased funds do you give it back to the citizens do you cap the tax rate that may be something that we can do right there's ways to do it but nobody's talking about that but i think it should be a conversation because again if we're going to shrink it do we cap the tax rate then the citizens can benefit from and, and you know higher coffers more money in the coffers and a lower tax rate maybe we can do something like that but we got to figure out what the what it looks like if we start making money Anything else you wish to add before we head into the session? Sir? No, I think it's going to be a great session. I'm looking forward to it. You know, I'm a little concerned about the, the, the way that the politics have been gerrymandered. Uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, um, you know, the Republicans, one of my buddies said, look, every Republican in the House is white, right? That's a problem for Georgia. I mean, it's not a problem, but when you have that kind of polarization, how do you really have real conversations that go on where we really need to be talking about Georgians? And I hope that over the next years, certainly if I'm in office, um, is that we start talking about the real political process of gerrymandering. How do we bring ourselves together? Because you're going to see a real interesting looking uh, General Assembly this year just because of gerrymandering. I think that's something that we got to look at as a state and really start looking at race neutral remedies that bring us together, not these polarizing extremes that keep us separated. So you, would you consider maybe looking at the districts aligning oh, yeah. and oh, re yeah. reworking oh, some yeah. of those? Absolutely. I, I think that has to be. I mean, Communities of interest are one thing, but we ha also have to incentivize one another to actually have to sit down, talk to one another, and negotiate what's best for everyone and not just your side or my side. Tomorrow morning on Daybreak, we'll hear from State Representatives Rusty Kidd and Patty Bentley to learn what they expect lawmakers to tackle this year.